I'm on, John just said. I'm on. Good morning, everybody. It is February 1st, red, Valentine's Day. Good things moving forward. I hope you had a great weekend. I did. I uh, got new furniture. I'll talk about that in my workspace, my art area. And John and I built it together in the garage. Man, I, we got it off Amazon. And it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like 10,000 little pieces, uh, like Ikea. But I will tell you that we did it and a couple walked by and John looked up and goes, well, we're still married. <laughs> the guy said, I'll come back tonight. <laughs> you can let me know. But we did it. And other than when we finished the chest, the drawer set, when we picked it up, it all fell apart. But fortunately, we got it back together. What do you want for 80 bucks, <laughs> right? But I'm very, very happy. But in the meantime, I want to show you this. A gal named Judith saw, I, I guess at a guild presentation, I must have been at, I show my very first sewing machine that I got for eighth grade graduation and it was a new home. And Judith sent me this picture. It's not exactly like mine, but she said, here it is so many years later. Mine was this color. And this is when we had drop-in cams and all that good stuff. And I, I loved my sewing machine. And the reason my parents chose this one for me was because, again, eighth grade graduation, it's what we had been using in home ec. Also, my cousin was a really good seamstress and she lived in a small apartment and she got that one because it was not noisy. I loved that machine. It was metal through and through. Just everything about it was fabulous. Well, later on down the road, when I got my first Bernina, which would have been 37 years ago, or something like that, I took my machine and I put it out in the garage on the floor. Stupidest thing on the face of the earth because what happened was it rusted, completely frozen, frozen shut. So don't do that. <laughs> I, I, it, was, it was one of those things that you couldn't even think about it because it just made you almost physically sick. So I remembered that when I saw this picture. So thank you, Judith. And I just wanted to put out that PSA. Don't put it on a garage floor. Or even if you live on a slab, like our first house did, it was a very wet area. I think it would have been doomed if I had even put it on our slab floor. So just an FYI. People wanted to know what this was all about. Well, I got, I indulged, all right? And there's a funny story with it. As you all know, I'm in Joanne Sharp's class, uh, in many of her classes. And this year we're doing like kind of a mixed media thing where she's having us work with cloth as well as paints and all that. So I made these two little books. I, ha I had to spend three days getting caught up because as you know, January was a blowout for me, but this is one of my books. And then here's another one of my books. And I mean, I just love these things. She also, we also, every year in her year long class, she has us get all organized in our book. And then we do good stuff in there. Like I, I love this one, this little pocket that I'm going to put stuff in. Anyways, when you, these are Shemika paint, paint, paints. Shemika is the Johnny was of clothing. I don't know what else to equate it to. And when you, I have a couple other Shmika sets. This is the big dog. And what you're supposed to do is make yourself a reference card so that when you run out, say like, I love that color. When I run out of that color, I just get a little filler tube and then I just fill it up and I don't have to do the whole thing. So that picture was me setting up you take the, is that upside down? Yeah. You take the little wrapper, you, and then you put the number, and then this is the order it is in the tray. But better than that, what you want to do is then paint it out. They give you a little paint card. So let's say I want this, this yellow or this orange yellow over here. I can uh, look at it, and I know it's called Indian yellow. And of course, we mix and match and all that. But I this took hours 
hours. And it's, it is like a little surprise too, because how it looks in the tray is not going to be how it looks on here. So I went and I did it all in black and in white, depending on the color. And then I ran it through my laminator. Oh, I failed to mention half of it was done with the friction pen. So I ran it through my laminator. What takes away friction pens? Heat. And I went, oh my gosh. And everything that was in black was gone. And then I thought, I don't even know if I can write on top of this lamination stuff. Turns out I could with the regular Sharpie. But I thought, okay, so what brings back <laughs> cold? So I put it in the freezer and it brings the friction back, right? So it didn't completely get it back, but it got it back enough that I could go back in and write the letters on both sides. I called Joanne and I said, you have the dumbest friend on the face of the earth. And she just started laughing. I mean, she was almost crying. So that was part of my weekend. Hey, we all do it, right? Then this is where I did my artwork before in this little fold up table and just kind of pirated, put it together. I was at Michael's the other day and I went, wait a minute, I want a better table. And I ended up going to, to Amazon, as I mentioned, and then this is what we put together. I just absolutely adore it. I'm not sure if that chair is going to work out so well, but I do have two of those chairs in here so we can sit down and, and watch TV together. But I want to show you this going back to my old one. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm, that book there on the left-hand side is Barbara Brackman's, Brackman's new encyclopedia book, and I believe we're getting them in the store pretty soon. And I'm looking at it, trying to figure out what we might be doing next, but I'm going to spend a whole thing on that. But I just, I love that I'm swinging back and forth between my painting to my quilting, and it all mixes together just beautifully. I feel blessed with the time that we have here right now that... I, I can stay home and I can create my, I've got my, I've got my mojo back as I hope you have too by, uh, by participating in this. So in going to the forum, here is uh, Meg Watts and she said she's a little behind the, the dime a little bit. And no, you're not. You just do this at your own pace. Meg, I would not have thought to include those blue greens in there, and it's just stunning. I can't wait to see what you do with it. Then we've got Shannon, and look at what Shannon did. I believe she said she had some fabric in there from South Africa. I don't remember if that's you, but I adore that vine going up it. And then note that uh, the, the two side, the you have the main house and then you got the two side houses and look at how she used stripes there. That's super cool. And actually in looking at mine now, I'm thinking I might do an arch like that for the main house because nothing's really been sewn down yet. Well, no, a lot of it has, but not that part. I don't like my little in that pink. I don't like that circle now after seeing yours. That's what's so great about sharing. Oh, come on. Texas quilter with the cat there. Come on. You're stealing my heart. That, that looks like my sparrow. So adorable. You know, it's funny because I just, I say it over and over. You guys knock, you people, you quilters knock my socks off. That's going to be the running joke, by the way. So here's Mommy's. And Mommy, I remember you were, I think those are silk daisies. You showed them earlier. And that's a very interesting idea. And then look at the gecko under the, the yellow bird house. Okay, Evelyn, what did you do? Oh, this was uh, as big as I could make this picture. Unfortunately, I'll make it a little bit bigger, but I kind of adore what's going on here. It, I, I just love it. You've, you've got it going on. Well, all of them have it going on, that's for sure. And then last but not least is Joan. Look at you're way ahead of the game. And oh, and then some of some of you people had like two holes for a birdhouse. Like, and I I like that. And was it the Texas quilter who was doing that too? 
And I thought, oh, wait a minute, let me get rid of Fab Jungle, bye-bye. No, that's the cat one. <laughs> oh, you miss mommy. No. Evelyn, where she's got like two entryways to some of the birdhouses. And honestly, that adds a lot of interest to the whole thing. So I just so appreciate when you guys share, go to the forum and yay. And the lighting is weird today because the sun comes out and then it goes away and then it comes out and then it goes away and ugh. Okay, I had a couple questions too. Somebody wanted to know what in the Quilter Select line works with Rosa's Appliquick way and it's print and piece fuse light. And then also, uh, Barbara Black, this Thursday, will be doing a live on the Mariner's Compass, and she's challenged me to do it. She said it won't take more than two hours. Yeah, she doesn't know who she's talking to, okay? But she will be there at 10 o'clock Pacific time to give you some tips on the Mariner's Compass for the block of the month, and if you have questions, bring them on board, and she'll answer them for you. So Barbara, we so appreciate what you do for us. And then also somebody wanted to know the, the inner size of the green on the birdhouse quilt. It finishes at 32 by 40. You can get the pattern on the site. And if you wanna make it smaller, which I believe that's what you were asking about, just make sure whatever size you make it, the outside edge will be divisible of. I knew by finishing at 32, but 40 actually it should be 40 by 32 you do with um yeah 40 by 32 that i could do four inch pinwheels or i could do two inch flying geese so you just got to make it so that things are divisible by when it's time to go put the board around that's the only trick to the whole thing and i have not yet had time to watch andrea brokenshire's show because we were building furniture all day that is not going to be a second occupation of ours. <laughs> and I can't wait to see it because I just adore her work. All right. Yes. Now we're going to do circles the apple pop way. So this is a really, this is what we sell in our store. We actually sell a kit that's double. You want more than one set of apple pops because they get really hot and when one is cooling, you can go then start the next one. You could buy two packs singularly, but if you buy them both together, you get a little break in, in the money. So this technique, the first time I did it, I have to be honest with you, I didn't have great success. That was a long time ago. And now I've got it down to a science and I'm ever so grateful that I've got a double set. Let's go to the, the document camera and take a look at it. All right, so actually this set was in our swag bag at Craft Napa. And so I grabbed it. I'm not quite sure what the finish size is, or what the uh, finish sizes are, but this is a lovely one to demo it. Make sure my iron's on. No, you want your iron on. Oh, by the way, we got a bunch of more cordless irons in. So what I, how I do it, and I do it a little bit differently than how they show you if you go YouTube it, I take the outer circle, the finish, the finish size circle is going to be this one. So I'm going to take the outer side circle and I'm going to draw around it with my friction friction pin which we all know goes away with heat especially when you go through a laminator <laughs> the idiot and so then i cut it out that size all right then the next thing i do is i take this cutout size they have you trim it on the video while it's popped in place and i'd rather trim it before and you snap it in place okay did i snap it too far a little bit come back a little bit then you're going to take your spray starch. This is actually a Mary Ellen's and it works just fine, but they recommend that you use a heavy duty spray starch. And we learned last week that Karen K. Buckley doesn't like it for her reasons. So that's the thing, guys. There's so many different ways you can do things. You have to find out what works for you. And then you go 
and you squeeze in and I'm making it so I don't have any little pointies on the outside edge. Squeeze it in with my little fingers. It holds a little bit. Now my friend Robin was trying to explain to me how you could do this with velvet and I'm gonna take it up again with her last night because <laughs> she gave up on me. So this looks pretty good right now. I'm just gonna do a little press with my iron. Boy, I love my teal one. Now, now, beware. This can get very, very hot. So I'm just going to turn it with my little stiletto, which is why you want to have a double set because it's going to take a little bit for this to cool off. I want to make sure all the starch is gone. Not quite yet. Note how I'm flipping with this. I want to make sure there aren't any little like foldies in there, just like the Rosa way, just like the Karen K. Buckley way. And in fact, on Wednesday, I'm going to do the Rosa way in circles because we, we touched on it, but I would like to be way more specific so that you guys, so you people get good results. I'm going to turn it over. It's getting dry. Do not use steam. You want the iron to take care of business. There we go. It looks pretty dry to me. I am not going to touch this. Let's give it a few minutes here. This one I've pulled out. Ouch, 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 ouch. See, that's the problem. <laughs> like soup, right? Cool down, cool down. And you can get a whole assembly line going. I think Pokey demoed this on the show too, but it was super windy outside and we were having issues. Okay, I feel like I see a little tuck there, but I can fix that too. I wanna get it out so you can see it. Okay, now I can see, let me turn this over. Yeah, no, that's pretty good, I can live with that. I'm gonna give it another press with the thing out, the ring out. Another press here, and there you've got your little perfect circle. Now, right in here, it's bugging on me a little bit, right in there. So I might well just go back and pull it, and then bring my iron to it. Remember, you're in charge, it's not. You wanna make sure you have a nice, real, smooth surface. It's interesting because all of these techniques that I'm showing you are, see, I don't like that. I probably, you know, the truth is, you guys, I took it out. I took it out too early. I should have made sure it was drier. It, it had a chance to take on a mind of its own. But nonetheless, here are little circles that I've done. They are perfect for hand applique. They are perfect for machine applique. They're absolutely adorable and easy to make. Now this set here, let me pull it out. I'm actually gonna take it out to the store today so we can resell it. I've got some here, I couldn't find it. I cleaned up, I cleaned up too much. Not cool. Whoops, so see, let's see what we have here. We've got this one. Oh, okay, so this is one. Okay, so that's the double, I think that's the double set of that. And then the double set of that. So you can just be the happy little circle makers. And they're, you know, it's quite methodical, pleasing. The only thing I really do different is I cut that circle out first. It seemed more, it seemed unwieldy when I left it like a square and then went in and, look at it, brother, we did it off camera. Um, it seemed unwieldy when I went in and did it and then tried to cut away the fabric. I, it just seemed easier to be able to just cut the circle and then do the thing. So very, very, very good product. Love it. All right, so what else is going on? I want this one back in my Craft Napa one. See, it's still warm. Mm -hmm. It's still warm. It's like those bias strip bars that we used to use when we were making uh, vines. And I still have mine and I love them, but man, you've just got to be respectful that they are metal. I appreciate that you guys are, 
that you, my friends, are hanging with me and we are able to go through these different processes because I can't say that one way fills the bill. I could see using the apple pops. I could see doing rosas. They're just, it depends, number one, what you can master, although this is pretty foolproof, um, foolproof, what you can master and what fits best into your repertoire. That's the thing. Now, I was busily trying to catch up with Joanne's class. I'm gonna get going back on this and get on, I'm probably gonna put some more flowers in. And one, let me get this up. One of the perks of sewing your border on first is that you do have the opportunity to flop up out into the border. And I believe I did that over here too. And I really like that. I might add another flower, maybe right in there. I don't know. I don't know. There was a, yes, I did show a birdhouse. Not a birdhouse, a mailbox one. Let me go grab it. I see it right over here. That's what started this whole thing. Um, if you want to do mailboxes, this was in one of the issues of the Quilt Life. What I would recommend you do is just go to Google Images and do ma cartoon mailboxes. That's what you need to do. Super easy to do. Whoops, let me go this way. There, okay. And it was inspired by some mailboxes in Door County, Wisconsin. My, what I would recommend is that you print them out or enlarge them to a size that relates to the bird houses and then that way you'll know you'll be in scale so you could really take advantage of google images i would if you think i can just draw this stuff mm -mm, mm -mm. and and it's and you're like oh wow i didn't think of that or i didn't think of that so let me see some comments here i'm running a little bit um i had a schedule oh also d's class starts on saturday we've got but we are packing up to move to Florida and my sewing room has been, <laughs> good luck with moving. It's so funny, Jerry goes, well, you know, Jerry's parents should move X, Y, Z. And I said, they're not moving anywhere. So, okay, so what was I going to say? What was I, what was I just talking about? What was I just talking about? This never happens to you. The mailbox. The mailbox. Oh, D. John, can you grab the long time gone pattern? Is it on my desk right there? Thank you. I'm tricking him to come over here. Get in here. Okay, so this, we have these on the site you can get. We've got a couple bundles left. And Dee will start this on Saturday, the Jen Kenwell long time gone Kingwell. And she's going to show you, I believe, how Jen does it. In the book and then how she might shortcut it or do it different ways so that's cool and then remember I said Barbara Black is gonna be here Thursday to help you with the center star of the quilt shows block of the month for February all right it's yours what am I talking about the oh the website <laughs> okay well right now we have uh, two problems one is uh, the current website has decided to at 2 a.m. in the morning Pacific time to go down. And we think we found out what it is. So if you've gotten a newsletter and tried to go to the site and it gave you an error code. Um, go back again. Yeah, go back again. Uh, we think we figured out what it is. There's differences in clocks running, uh, having a problem. And the new website right now, it looks pretty good for us going down um, on next Monday. But there's going to be a fake website in there that you and can go to. There'll be a temporary website for a week, and then the new website should come up on February 15th. So it looks pretty good for that. Um, what needle do you use for hand? For oh, hand? And I had one idea for okay, sure. the birdhouses. Mm -hmm. By the way, she throws away my ideas, so can you. Um, instead of two doors on it, you mm -hmm. can have at the top put a barn quilt and then a door. Okay. <laughs> Actually, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> oh, 
that's a pretty good idea. So what kind of needles do I use? I, when I'm hand sewing, I like sharps. They're what I love when I'm quilting. Of course, I use betweens. And yes, you can go back and watch these videos, these Facebook Lives. If you go to the front page of thequiltshow.com and scroll down, you'll see a thing called the playlist, and it's all right there. So if you didn't come on board and you want to get on board, just go back and start. I typically start teaching at about 10 after because I have to wait for people to load on. I call it my tap dancing. John, they're liking the idea. Uh, again, I will not be here on Friday because I'm getting my shot. I couldn't believe it. I'm so I'm stabbing myself. I can't believe I get the shot. And I'm really excited because I will be able to get it in time for when I have to fly to Texas to do another round of taping. So very, very good. In fact, I don't know if I shared this with you last Wednesday or whatever. I was on hold. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to register online for the shot because I forgot what my real name is, which is Alexandra. And so it didn't recognize me in the system. And the phone got picked up after an hour and a half of waiting. And I thought, I am not hanging on. I mean, I am not hanging up. I was gonna go Facebook Live with Muzak playing in the background. <laughs> my neighbor, it took two and a half hours. So if you're over uh, the age, we have two different systems here where we live. We have Palo Alto, Sutter, and then we have Stanford. One is 65 and one is 75. I happen to be in the 65 year old group. So I'm very excited about this. It's Medicare! <laughs> okay, got my shot this past Saturday. I hear the second one will knock you on your butt. Yes, that's what I've heard too. And so I'm taking my calendar when we go and I'm gonna make sure that that I work around it. If, if I get knocked on my butt and it's a teaching day, I may just get up and say I'm knocked on my butt. You know, so I, because I'm not, beggars can't be choosers when you're trying to get this vaccine. Okay. Oh, I'm glad to see everybody's, that's great. All right. So I want you guys to, so Lisa, if you're getting your second shot tomorrow, just make sure you got food in the fridge. All right. Look at this. Yay. <laughs> so anyways, here's one for you to ponder before I go. I was talking to a friend and this person, uh, he has the opportunity to cut, take cuts. And the reason he, he goes, he feels really, really, he shouldn't do it. But what's happening here, at least right now, is they're throwing away shots at the end of the day. And to this point of, I've heard of people transporting the shots and getting caught in snowstorms. So they're running down the cars, you know, do you want a shot, do you want a shot? And so, so I, and this person didn't want to do it, this guy, and I said, you know what, I, you should do it because going in the garbage can doesn't help anybody. So at, at channel seven, Rondi, if you're watching, news at noon, they've got these young kids that are the newscasters now. They're, they're babies. I mean, they're practically out of diapers. And they were talking about the subject matter. If it's wrong, if it's right, personally, I think if they're throwing them away, let's get them in somebody's arm. That's my opinion. And so I'm sitting there watching and they're debating it. And one person said, well, if you're over 75, they should just tweet out that they have them there and then they can get the tweet and then they can go get the shot, the 75 year olds. Do any of you tweet? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I almost wrote the stage. <laughs> he needs someone besides a teenager presenting your news. <laughs> so with that, I hope it makes you, um, I hope you, you should, <laughs> I hope that gave you a laugh like it did me. Good grief. So have a great day. I'm going to get sewing back on this thing. And uh, I think Joanne's February class drops today too. So I'm just having a ball being in my space. And I just wish you wonderful things. Have a great day. Uh, go catch the Andrea Brokenshire show. I'm going to do that while I'm working today. And just thank you so much for choosing to be with me. I so appreciate it. And I'll see you Wednesday. Bye-bye.